Hi, I'm Carol Corey, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Welcome back to my Creating Corner. And if this is your first time here, I'm so glad you found me. Hit subscribe and click the notification bell, and then you'll be notified the next time I post a video. It'd be great to have you come back and stamp with me again. So today, I'm doing something that goes along with my last video. The last video, I did three special little note cards. This video is the box in which to put them. Now, right now, I've got six note cards and envelopes in this box. It would hold more, except these note cards are a little thicker. I've been using dimensionals. Two of them are Z fold cards, so that's a little puffier and thicker. But still, can you imagine getting this as a gift? How thrilling it would be? And then loaded with six note cards you could actually put a couple another you could probably put one or two more in there but isn't this a fantastic gift idea or just for yourself make your little note card box stick it in a drawer maybe at work to keep them handy at work in case something comes up and you need a um, quick card for somebody regardless I love this box I like this box because <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I like being able to make the box out of thick cardstock, <coughs> and Stampin' Up! does carry the 8.5 by 11 heavy cardstock. Um, the other box that I had done was years ago, and it was a two piece, <coughs> which was nice, but it needs a 12 by 12. And I think being able to use the heavy cardstock makes it a little bit sturdier. So I found this by Poodles Paper Craft this design and I'll put their link below and I think it's perfect. So let me get this down to my creating table and let's get started. Okay so here is my note card box. As I said I got this one piece box um, the measurements from Poodles Paper Craft. Now what they did, what she did is she had some very thin magnets and she hid the magnets underneath the designer paper to give it a magnetic closure. I didn't have any magnets on hand, didn't want to wait for them to come in the mail. You know, why buy something that you don't, if you don't need it? So I just did a little sentiment that you can just tuck the lid under. Works perfectly fine for me. So this is my note card box, and I did use some paper that is now retired, but let me show you something I should have done. Oh, well, these are the cards. Now I have two of each design. I've got Happy Birthday, and this is a Z Fold card. And notice I've got little fuzz in the middle of the flowers. And then I have a Sympathy card. And a Cute Get Well card. So, And of course, they're all dimensional up, you know, and let me, this is, um, so it does make it a little bit thicker. If you didn't make the cards so thick, you could definitely put more than six in here. But what lovely gift idea, right? To give a set of cards to somebody. This is with the, um, the new Welcome In paper. It's a beautiful blue and white florals, but on the back are all these striking, very um, subtle, nice background, darker background papers. So, and this was the Cheerful Daisies, and this is the um, oh, sending, sending Wishes or something like that. I'll put the link to that video down below also, as well as the link to Poodle's Paper Craft. So let me get this in here. Now let me show you what I'm going to do this time. If I had thought about it, if I had thought about it, I wish I did. I am obsessed, just obsessed with these inked botanical papers. Are these not absolutely gorgeous? And then the backs are cute and I mean just I love, whoops, I just love these papers, but look at these. 
If I had paid attention and thought about it hard enough and planned well enough, I would make, I actually might do this for a birthday present for a friend, I'm going to make a set of cards using the papers in this ink botanical set, the 6x6 six six ink botanical set, and then I'm going to do a box to match with the papers. I just, yeah, I love this ink botanicals. It's so pretty. But anyways, so we are using, so I'm doing something with a little bit of a brighter floral and Night of Navy, and there's very, very little stamping. The stamp sets, I'm using two stamp sets though. I'm using Perched in a Tree, so I can get that bird. And I'm going to use the Just For You from the Charming Sentiments. Now, this is so cute, and these do have dies that are shaped like each of the um, phrases, so it's really cute. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to use the Just For You out of this set, and I'm only using the, the bird out of the Perched in a Tree. This is in our Christmas um, section of our catalog. Isn't it so pretty? It makes a beautiful Christmas card. It was in our holiday catalog last year and was so popular they put it in the annual catalog this year. If you don't have an annual catalog or if you don't have a regular Stampin' Up! demonstrator, just um, put a message down below or you'll see my website address. Send me a message through my website and I'll get a catalog to you. It's so... It's really cute. There are a lot of cute things in there. There are a lot of pretty things in there. Um, it's always it's nice to be able to look at things online, but to hold it in your hand and look at it, that's a good thing too. So I'm doing the, this cute little bird out of Perched in a Tree. Now, what goes along with this set is um, the dies are called the Aspen dies. There's the little bird. And then the Aspen tree dies. We've got this tree. We've got the branch and some leaves. I'm using this tree and the branch and actually I've already done my cutting from this. Um, I want to show you what I did when the time comes. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so let's get started. I think the first thing I'm going to do is stamp my bird because I've pretty recently re-inked my memento pad and it's kind of juicy and it might take a minute for the ink to dry. So I'm using, I'll be using Stampin' Blends. These are our alcohol markers. Since I'm using the alcohol markers, I need to use the Memento ink. This is the water-based ink. They, it won't smear as easily. If I was using our Stampin' Write markers, like this one, then I would want to do my image, I'd want to do my stamping using the stays on to help keep it from running as much. But I'm using the blends and so I'm using the memento pad and if you notice the way I keep my blends is I make this little box out of the out of the right color paper. This is Daffodil Delight so I made the box out of Daffodil Delight paper and it makes it so easy when I'm looking in my case. I just look for the literal color that I need. I actually did a um, video making these a long time ago. I'll put that link down below too. Because let me tell you, it makes my life a lot easier. It might make yours easier too. Okay, so let's get this bird stamped. <coughs> um, Usually, you put the larger down. If the stamp is bigger, you put it down and move the ink pad over the stamp. If the stamp is small, you have it down and you tap on top of it. These are about the same size. I'm going to use this. This is a different kind of ink pad. You can actually rub if you want. So, that is a quick and easy way to do it. Whoops. And I'm going to just stamp it right there. Remember, I'm going to be cutting it out with the die. Keep that die right there so I don't lose track of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I probably should have taken an allergy pill today. I'm going to set this aside and let it dry. Now what I did, you notice here where we've got the aspen tree background and the bird is sitting on a branch. Well, I've gone ahead and cut it. When you cut the aspen tree background, this is how it comes out. This is, and then it, then you just put it down over whatever your colored it cardstock would be, and that looks very pretty. I mean that that's gorgeous, but for this box, that's not the look I was going for. So after I cut the aspen um, trees. I went ahead and just cut them out with a big oval. And yes, the trees are hanging loose at the bottom, which is fine. I, you know, that's fine for me. And then I embossed it. Now we've got a cute um, embossing folder called Timber. And I did want a little bit of a wood grain on my aspen trees and on the branch. So now I'm taking, this is on crumb cake paper and I'll have all my measurements down below. So I've got my crumb cake ink and my blending brush and I'm just gonna hit it a little bit just to help add some shadows, add a little bit of depth, pull out that embossing. Sometimes if you emboss something and it's not a very dark, it, a very deep impression, lightly go over it with some ink. Just lightly sponge over it and it'll really pick up and highlight your cuts and your embossing. There we go. That's pretty cool. Okay. Get that out of the way. I'm not going to need that again. I will set this aside. Okay, now the important thing. How do you make this box? Okay, to make the box and to make it nice and sturdy, you want to use thick cardstock. Thick cardstock. Stampin' Up! does sell the thick cardstock. If you think you would like to make this and just are not sure about the thick cardstock or not, if you want to try it out. The Perched in a Tree stamp set, let me grab it, the Perched in a Tree stamp set plus the Aspen Tree dies, these go together. If you buy these two pieces, when I see that in my orders, in my store, my back, back office, I will automatically send you the papers to make this box. Now the designer series paper will vary, but you will get the thick card stock as well as designer series paper and your crumb cake paper, something to put your bird on and to make your um, circle. I'll stamp, I'll go ahead and punch your circle out for you. Okay, so yes, yeah, so if you buy the stamp set and the dies, you will get the materials to make your very own box in the mail. Okay, so to make this, first you need for the lid, you're going to take, this is our new Stampin' Trimmer. Well, it's not really new. It's been around now for a couple of years, but it's the newer one. So here we've got seven by four. And you notice your measuring lines go all the way up. So if it's crooked, you can tell. So it's seven by four. And then I've scored it at two and three inches. Okay, so I've got score lines right there. I don't know if you can see them. I'm going to give them a good rub. Now this is for the lid. Give it a good crease with the bone folder. When you're making a box especially, you want to have good creases. So there I've got very sharp creases. It's keeping its shape. Okay. 
Now for the base. The base is um, eight and a half, which is the regular width of the regular cardstock, by eight. Eight and a half by eight. So on the trimmer, you notice it opens up. You can go all the way to 17 and a quarter inches on with this arm open. But once I cut it at eight and a half by eight, then it's time to do some scoring. So I'm going to score it at one, two, six, whoops, yes, six and seven. Okay? One, two, six, and seven. And that's on the eight inch when it's along the eight inch measure. So you're actually going down the eight and a half inch. Now I'm going to turn it. I'm at the eight and a half measure now, and I'm going at the eight and a half measure, and I'm going to score it at two and three. Okay? Four scores on one direction, two scores on the other. Okay. You might want to bend the scores a little bit just so you can see them easier. I'm going to do it so you can see easier. Oh, and also when I send you the cardstock, um, you will receive a very precise diagram of, here you go. I will send you a very precise diagram of how to cut your cardstock, okay? Because there is a little bit of a trick. So we're going to get everything folded in so we can see. Now I've already cut on one end, okay? You'll notice these two sections right here I have cut completely off. <gasps> Where are my snips? Here they are. So I'm going to cut up this inside score line to the next score line and then I'm just going to cut these two little pieces straight off. There we go. Now, can you see I've got a score piece here and a score piece here. I'm going to take this one off. The outside one I'm going to take off. Okay. So now, looks like stairs, right? This one right here, you know on a box you've got those end flaps that come in. That's what this is. That's what this is. I need to cut this one loose. So I'm going to cut up to the next score line. So here we go. It's been cut free. Now in order for it to fold in and everything to fold around and fit better, this is a little thick. Look what I did here. I shaved off a little on both sides. Can you see that? It's not straight down. It's a little crookedy. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm just going to cut just a little bit. If you've made boxes before, you've done this, I'm sure. So just a little bit. Just a little bit. Right up to the edge. That way it's not exactly straight and it'll give more room for everything to fold in. We are not um, gluing anything quite yet. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do all my scores pretty sharply, of course. Sharp score lines. Sharp score lines are a good thing. Okay. Now, with these being cut like that, see, you can just fold them like that and up. Well, I'm going to fold it like that, that, and then that's going to come up in front. So you will be able to see the front card over here. Okay. Um. Before we glue this box into position, we're going to add our designer series paper. So here I've got two strips 
that are, oops, that's the wrong side down. One side is metric, the other side is imperial, or what we seem to call just regular measuring here in the States. So I've got two pieces that are one and three quarter by five and a quarter. You see I can measure across the bottom and up the side with this fabulous graph paper. So I've got two pieces. So I'm going to put them here. Now I'm going to first put them in place. And I've got this nice crisp score line, right? So I'm going to score it right on there. I'm going to bend it. So that way, let me show you something. When you are using a trimmer or a scorer, you've actually got more than one measurement. You can come up to the line. Do it this way. You can come up to the line. You can hit it on the line. See, you can see the slightest shadow of the measuring line. Or you can cover the line. So you've got, it's just the tiniest, tiniest whisper of a difference. But it'll make a difference. It makes a difference. You have to measure on the same line, the same um, point, either just before it, just barely covering it, or just after it or else things aren't going to necessarily match up. So when it comes to getting your score line for this, I just take the designer series paper, put it on the already scored thing, and that's where I get my bend. And I'm going to do that on both sides. This one I know matches that side. Whoopsie. This paper does have a direction to it, so, okay. So I'm going to glue it down. Okay. Make sure if you're using directional paper, you're going the right direction. Yikes, it's got glue in the wrong spot there. Um, there we go. And same thing on the other side. Get it where you want it to be. Take it along your fold. And now glue it. Yeah, I do use a lot of glue. I don't want my stuff falling apart. Okay. Make sure your directions are all going upwards. Okay. Okay. And now on the back, I take my piece that is three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And I'm going to glue that right there on the back panel. Again, be careful of the direction. There we go. Okay. Almost ready. Not quite. Now we have to put the lid on. Here's my lid. I think it would be just a bit much to put floral. Oh, I didn't do the bottom. And of course this panel is going to come up and hold in from the front right there. So we're going to put this. This is three and three quarters by one and three quarters. Okay, 
Now I need the lid. And again, rather than perhaps scoring that whisper of, of a position wrong, okay, this is two inches right here. We've got two inches, one inch across the top, and then, what was it, six? Oh, four. Four inches for the front. This is the lid. We're going to put the short end, this two inch side, we're going to glue on the inside of the box. Now, if you wanted to take a piece of designer series paper to cover where that's glued, that would be a very beautiful finishing touch. Um, I am not going to do that right now, but just remember the two inch goes on the inside. This is going to flop over and come across the front. Okay, this is where we need the designer series paper. So I'm going to place it. This designer series paper is four and three quarters. I didn't even have, why do I, uh, I always turn it, but I don't have to. It's four and three quarters by three and three quarters. It's one of those habits. I'm going to place it where I want it. And then I'm going to fold, whoopsie, that, it moved, it moved. Okay, I'm going to fold it where I want it. Okay. Really should have done those note cards with the inked botanical papers to match. Oh, look what I did. Put it on the wrong side. Okay. That's okay because that's getting glued down anyway. So there, there, and there. Silly me. over just a tad bit. Best laid plans, right? There we go. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit more glue here. And that gets glued right here. back. Go. Now, this is coming along good. I'm going to put on these little tabs here and here. I'm going to hold my box like this. I'm going to bring this up. I'm just going to hold it for just a minute. Stick my finger on the inside to press it. Stick my finger on this one on the inside to press it. Now if you used a little bit of tear and tape, you wouldn't have to do that, but I didn't think about it. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here. Here, oops, I'm running out, there we go, and those little flappy edges, put that in, and there we go. Again, if you use tear and tape, it could actually be a little bit easier for you, but I'm just going to hold that for half a second. Okay, that's sit, 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 sit. We've got some, why isn't it holding? Let me hold it just another minute. Oh, there we go. Squish it hard, squish it hard. There, there.
Sorry. Okay. All right. That that's good. Now we've got to do some coloring. What did I do with my bird? Here my bird is. Okay. So I've got some crumb cake. Now if you look at our markers, you've got a thick line on one end and a thin line on the other. The thick line shows you that that's the marker end. The thin line shows you it's the pen end. I'm going to use the thin pen end with the dark crumb cake just to get his foot. Just to get his little foot. There we go. And I'm going to use some Daffodil Delight on his beak. I'm going to use the Dark Daffodil Delight just right there to add a little bit of color to his beak. Okay. And, oh, while I've got my Daffodil Delight out, I'm going to go ahead and with the um, artist's little detail lines, I'm going to hit these little detail lines with my Daffodil Delight, the dark one. These blends come dark and light. There we go. And now I'm going to take my light Daffodil Delight and I'm going to fill in and blend it in. See, look, that they blend together so you don't see a line from the light to the dark. They just kind of blend in together. I like that. Let's give his face a little bit of... I'm going to pull that yellow up into his face a little bit. Okay. And now the rest will be Night of Navy. Take my dark Night of Navy the thin side and highlight out the artist's highlights. And now the light. I love blue and yellow together. Okay, now let's cut the little fella out. This is the mini Stampin' Embossing Trimmer. Isn't it so cute? Look at that. Just fold straight out. I love using this one. It's easy to take places. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and I need to go ahead and cut this narrower so it'll actually fit through. Okay. Now with this Stampin' Trimmer we've got the dark blade which is the cutting blade and the lighter blade is the scoring blade. So you've got them both right there. Okay. Come here you cutie. So we get Plate number one, put plate number two on top of it. Get our paper and our die. I might grab a little piece of washi. Sometimes this 
good to use a piece of post-it note or some old washi tape just to make sure your um, die doesn't shift. Things happen. Things happen. It's a little, but it is mighty. And there it is. Come on back. Come on back. Did you notice I was only using just a couple fingers to turn the crank? You can put your whole hand on it, but you put your whole hand on it, but you really only need a couple fingers. It goes so easily. You fold this up. I mean, how convenient. Our big one folds up like this, too. So easy to pack away. Okay. Get our birdie out. There we go. Okay, we need to do... We need to do our sentiment. We're only doing that one sentiment for the front, and that's going to be to keep it connected. Okay, so I've got a piece, just a scrap of Knight of Navy. Let me push that, turn it up so it unlocks. Stampin' Up uh, thinks of everything. You can lock it shut, and it makes it flat, much easier to pack away and store. Okay. Now, if you look, okay, this is one and three eighths inch punch. I'm going to put my Knight of Navy paper in there. There we go. I'm going to squeeze it shut and slide that little bar up, and there it is nice and flat. Now, for my sentiment, for my sentiment, oh, by the way, when you are using Stampin' Blends, all, you can't use it on something that's not going to be layered because the blends bleed through this particular paper because it was the bird on front. It's not the thick card stock. So if, it's fine that it bled through because it's going to be layered, but if you're going to stamp like a card front, just the front of the card, and you want to color it in, that needs to be the Stampin' Right markers because the blends will bleed through and when you open your card you'll see it bled through if it's not layered up. It's always got to be on a panel or something. Okay, now back to this, back to this. I also have a one inch punch. So glad Stampin' Up! brought back different size punches, circle punches. It makes it so quick and easy. Okay, um, this sentiment just for you is from the charming sentiments and you notice it is a photopolymer stamp when you're you know the clear stamps when you're using a photopolymer stamp you don't necessarily have to have a stampin pad but best practice it's you're a little more guaranteed of a good good impression if you use a stampin pad okay Tap, tap, tap. Don't push and smush. Just tap, tap, tap. And you don't have to um, push down and use a lot of power. You just sit it on the paper. The paper will take the ink. You know, if you smush stamps hard, give it a lot, a lot of pressure, you can actually make the rubber in the stamp bend a little bit and actually distort your stamp image. You don't want to do that. Okay, so just for you, put it in here. It's perfect with this one inch punch. Okay, and again, I'm going to squeeze it shut, slide that up, and it's locked now. See how they just see how they just stack up and don't slide. Okay. little dab of glue. There are mice. Okay. Let me hold this with the... Let me just put a little dab of glue on here. Okay. 
and put it in the middle of that one. Now I'm going to put, now I need to put it on a dimensional so that it is raised up so that the, what happened here? Okay. need to put it on the dimensional so it's raised up so the lid can tuck underneath it, right? So I need to make sure that there's room to tuck. I'm going to put my dimensional towards the bottom of my little circle, little sentiment circle. If you wanted to do two to make it even higher, that's fine. This is just one. I'm not going to put that on yet. I'm going to wait until I've got my front completed. Okay. Now you notice the aspen trees will drip over the bottom. That's the look I was going for. Um, as you recall, I do have one like this. I could have trimmed the edge just a little bit and let it be like that, but I didn't want the trees going down quite so far, and then it would have been an issue. Um, I would have had to put, if you want to do this, then you have to put your sentiment in the middle, and you have to bend your lid that way to clip around your um, stopper. I just didn't want to do that on this one. So, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the backs of my trees. And, of course, you don't want to go all the way to the bottom because your bottom of the trees are going to be hanging over. You have to keep your directions in mind. You know, the lid is going to flop, you know. You have to keep um, your tree trunks in mind that they're going to be hanging over. Okay. Put that there. There we go. Oh, I don't have... Here are foam strips, Stampin' Up foam strips. You can cut your dimensionals, that's not an issue, but I just as soon use a foam strip along the back of my branch. Make sure you have your right side. Now, it's longer. I'm not going to use my paper scissors to cut it because I don't want my paper scissors getting adhesive. These scissors right here with this red pipe cleaner on it, these are my sticky scissors. These are what I cut my, that's what I cut my um, dimensionals with. If I've got something glued down and I want to cut it apart, I use these. Same as with this. I'm going to cut off the extra piece. Whoopsie. Look at these are really nice long strips you get. And you just pull off the strip and cut what you need. You get um, two of them in a pack. Two, two of these. Look at all that. Okay. Put my branch is across with that. Now I'm going to set my bird on here. Now mind you, I don't want to put a dimensional behind her foot because it's going to be sitting on the branch. But I will put plenty of dimensionals on the bird itself and that's going to help make sure that the trees don't snag on something and come loose. Here's where, here's a good spot right here for me to put 
Yeah, and I can feel the thing, so I'm just going to put it right here. Almost done. I always feel like more is more. This is the um, three-piece Tinsel Trio, Tinsel Gems three-pack. Now, you can choose whatever you want, but I'm going to use some of these blue, pretty blue gems. Where am I going to put them? I'm going to take two of the smaller ones. I'll put one there. Just put a little sparkle on it. I love sparkle. It's so pretty. And let me put a bigger one down here. There we go. Just for you. And it's got the bling on it. And it's got something that will hold it shut. Isn't that pretty? And let me grab a note card. Oopsie. And then it's all ready now to slip a couple note cards in. There you have it. These note cards are available, by the way, there's 20 cards plus 20 envelopes for $8. So, is that not awesome? I love it, I love it, I love it. So, this box is so quick and just so pretty. And is that not just the best birthday or Christmas present? Or anything present, you know? A nice box of note cards. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this. Like I said, if you do not have a U.S. demonstrator and you um, need some help with your stamping up, your, with your stamping or your scrapbooking, https creating with carol.stampinup.net. You'll see it on this video. I'll have all my links down below. Um, I'd be more than happy to help you. If you need a catalog, just let me know. I'll get one right in the mail to you. And, oh, I love it. Please, if you like my box, I'd love for you to give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't already. I'd love for you to come back and play with me again. So, until next time, keep making the world a beautiful place. Bye.